Today we're going to upload a GEDCOM to Family Search and have total control over it. This is not part of the collaborative world tree. And I bet this is a resource you didn't even know about. So we're going to talk about how to do this GEDCOM up to Family Search. And well, I know that you probably are in disbelief. I bet you didn't know that you could do this because Family Search is a collaborative tree where everybody contributes to it and can change data, which sometimes irritates people when they see their ancestors' data being changed by another person. So here we're going to upload a GEDCOM to a genealogy file at Family Search. Before we get to that, let me explain what a GEDCOM file is. If you're not familiar with a GEDCOM file, it is a way to download all of the data from one source like maybe say Ancestry or MyHeritage or some other place that you've been building your tree, you can download a GEDCOM file and upload it for free to other services. And so today we're going to do it at Family Search and show you how you have total control over that. And the cool part about GEDCOM files is you don't have to retype all that data. Now you should know though that the images and documents don't come with it. Only the data, only the stuff that you put in the fields, the birth, marriage, death dates, places, all that stuff, the names, all of that. That is in the GEDCOM file, but not the pictures of your ancestors or the documents that were linked to those files. So we're going to talk about those genealogies and GEDCOM files at Family Search coming up next. Hey, before we jump into it, let me introduce myself. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notified each time I upload a video. There is a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Make sure you're hooked up with all those. Links are in the description box below. There is also a handout uh, for this episode with step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this. That is for the Information Access Level channel members. If you want to learn more about that, click the Join button. We'll talk more about that at the end of the show. All right, let's get into it. Okay, I'm super excited about this. So I'm over here on Family Search, and before we can upload a GEDCOM, we have to actually download a GEDCOM from somewhere else. And so I'm going to show you two different ways to do that. I'm going to show you on Ancestry, and I'm going to show you on MyHeritage. And the reason why is because I think uh, it might be a little different at MyHeritage and might allow you to download images. I don't know how this is going to work. I've not done this before, so we're going to walk through this together. Um, but we have to download from somewhere else first. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to upload to Family Search. Now in the handout, I have download instructions for a lot of different services, not just these two. So if that is something of interest to you, make sure that you are a member of the information access level channel membership. Okay, so we're going to jump over to Ancestry first and download a GEDCOM. I'm over here in the trees menu. How you get there is from the trees tab, you drop down to create and manage trees and it takes you to this screen. You then need to pick the tree that you want to download a GEDCOM for and you go to tree settings. And once you are on the tree settings, uh, a green button pops up that says download a GEDCOM file. Now it's going to automatically go into my download folder, but if I didn't want to do that, I could right click and I could say save link as and I could put it wherever I want. For example, on my desktop. I'm too lazy to do that. So typically what I do is I minimize this screen, I grab this and I drag it over here. Now. I want to remember that this one here is from Ancestry because I'm going to do the same thing on MyHeritage. So let's jump over to MyHeritage. Okay, so on MyHeritage what you do is you click on the family tree and you drop down to Manage Trees. Then once you are here, you pick the family tree that you want. I'm going to use this tree here and you export a GEDCOM file. Now it ha gives me the option to export personal photographs and export family tree album. I'm going to say yes to both of those. I could uncheck those if I didn't want to. We're going to see how this works and see if uh, this actually will upload those images to uh, family search. We'll see. Okay, so again, this this MyHeritage GEDCOM file. You don't have to do both of them, by the way. You only want to do one, but I'm experimenting to see which one does what. So uh, we're going to minimize this. I'm going to drag this over here and I'm going to put this one on the left side of my desktop so I know that 
my heritage is over here ancestry's version of it is over here now those trees are a little different on my my family tree so now we're going to jump over to family search and upload the jedcoms at family search you have to remember that uh, we are uploading these as genealogies. These are not contributing to the world collaborative tree. And that is why there is no other people that are going to be messing with the ancestors in the tree. However, you should know that this is a great resource for looking for your ancestors. So we're going to show you more about that here in just a moment. All right. So to upload a GEDCOM, we go over to search. We drop down to genealogies and once we're on this page, we're not going to be searching for anything. We're going to scroll down to this point where we can submit a tree and I'm going to upload a GEDCOM file and I'm going to name this one Henley Knox family tree exported from ancestry. So we know which one it is and I'm going to choose a file. Okay. I picked up that GEDCOM file from this one right here. That was the ancestry tree. You can write a description about it and then you hit upload. Please keep this dialogue open until it is done. All right. So now it says it's processing. Okay. So I'm going to upload another file. I'm going to upload this time. I'm going to upload the Henley Knox I heritage here I'll put in here I don't know if that really makes a difference or not okay so I chose the file that was over here on the left hand side that was the my heritage file and I'm going to upload that one the second one that I uploaded is processing but this one has been uploaded uh, this one is comparing this one is uploaded I have not hit compare on it if you look this one from my heritage that I uploaded only has 88 people in it this one from the Henley Knox family tree from Ancestry has 3453. So I'm going to hit compare on that, but I imagine this is going to take a lot longer. While I'm waiting for some of this, oh, it looks like the first one's done. I just wanted to read this to you. It says, upload your tree. Once uploaded, it becomes searchable within 15 minutes and will preserve your family history. After comparing your GEDCOM, you can share your research with the family tree community. Any living people in your GEDCOM will not be added. So this is kind of interesting. So now I have a view button here. So this is the one from my heritage. So we're going to jump over there and take a look. I'm going to right click and open in a new tab so we don't lose our space. And so now it's giving me uh, some comparisons to what is in the tree versus what was uploaded. And now I could uh, replace or change some of these details. Now this could take some time to go through every person. Let's go down. So we've got a list of people here that are need to be added. Melissa Smith. We just really want to be careful to uh, make sure that they're not already in the family search family tree. So we're adding them to the family search family tree. So if I hit add, let's see what happens. Okay. So added to the family tree and now she's, now she's showing in the family tree. This is the GEDCOM person. Okay. All that data came with it. Okay. I don't see any images, but I didn't have any images for her. This first one that we're importing is from the My Heritage tree. And I went back to make sure that there was actually a photograph. And I see that Herman Miller Madsen does have a photograph because the whole experiment here was to see if the, while I'm exporting photographs, is that photograph exporting with him? And it looks like jumping back over to the comparison, here's Herman Miller Madsen. I don't think I see any photographs that came over with it. So it might be that family search is not importing the photographs. Well, my heritage may be exporting them, not everything imports. So that's a good lesson to know. So we're going to jump over now to importing the ancestry GEDCOM file. Okay. So I'm back over at family search. We had uploaded two different GEDCOM files just as a comparison, as an experiment. And now we see the one that I uploaded from Ancestry is ready. This is the big one with 3453 persons in it. So we're going to view that. And this is going to be quite a list to compare. So here we have all individuals, add family members. So we have 701 family members that we can add to the tree and take a look. Now, I don't have to do this. We don't have to add them to the world collaborative tree. We can just leave this here as a genealogy for others to research. And that's what I'm going to do right now, because quite frankly, 700 people for me to research is a little much. And this is my point. This is why you need to go up here and search genealogies 
Because if you're on Ancestry, you're on Find My Past, you're somewhere else, your wiki tree or whatever, and you are doing research over here at Family Search, make sure that you are dropping over and searching the genealogies for some of your ancestors. Now remember, we're always doing focused research, so you want to be able to search the people that you are really focused on right now. What is your research question? Who is it that you want to know more about? And just research those. You don't have to go crazy trying to research your whole family tree. But as you're working through your research questions, you can come over here and uh, do some research in the genealogies. And again, search genealogies, or you can get to it from this little sub menu. And research your family because it might be in one of these genealogies that somebody else has uploaded. And it might not be in the world tree. And some of these uh, GEDCOM files are very old. They've been around for a while. Somebody uploaded them a decade ago, right? So you might find information up there that is not necessarily in the world tree. So there is your bonus tip, all right? Okay, it took me a minute to figure this out. I was thinking, okay, what, how do we get back to this list of trees that I have contributed if I wanted to say a week later and the only way i have figured out how to do that is to return to this upload a jedcom so again if i go to search genealogies and i scroll down and i say submit my tree there are the trees that i have already uploaded they're not really editable but i could download them and i can delete them from here so that is how you can upload your family tree nobody can mess with it it is searchable in the genealogies and you have total control. You can delete them if you want later on. Okay, I hope that was helpful. New, new resource that you may not have known about, check it out. It's under genealogies, under the search tab, down to genealogies, make sure you're searching for your family. Hey, I hope you found that helpful. If so, hit the like button. And as a reminder, there is a handout for this episode. All you have to do is click the join button. There are two levels. One is the support genealogy TV level that gets you early access. And there is the information access level that gets you early access and the handouts. So all you have to do is hit the join button to learn a little bit more. There are more videos on the screen for you now that you might find interesting. All right, you guys, enjoy the journey.